Przewalski horses, the last wild horses on Earth. These are descendants of horses that ranged across Asia and Europe 20,000 years ago. Last seen in the wild in 1968, they've only survived in Western zoos. For the last 10 years, Przewalski horses have been raised under unique conditions in southern France by Swiss equine specialist Claudia Fay. I guess that the first time I, I saw Przewalski horses was on, on pictures in cave paintings. And I was much impressed by the beauty of the animals, but at the same time, the cave paintings do not just depict horses. It's the whole fauna that existed at this period of time. And that all these animals existed in our world. And they've all disappeared. And that um, touched me. Human expansion forced the species to retreat to Western Asia, where they were officially discovered by Colonel Nikolai Przewalski in 1879. But by the 1970s, Przewalski horses had been hunted to extinction in the wild and only 300 survived in captivity. In 1993, Claudia Fay began an ambitious project to reintroduce Przewalski horses to the wild. Her plan was to take horses back to Mongolia in preformed family groups to increase their chances of survival. Eleven individuals from different zoos arrived at Le Villaret on the Massif Central, where they were allowed to breed naturally. We have 53 horses now and some more foals to come this spring. And they're organized in five family groups and two bachelor groups. The fact that this herd exists and the, uh, and the family style is tolerated rather uh, means that this project is, is really a success. Claudia's plan is to take three Przewalski family groups to Mongolia in September 2004. It's early May, and Claudia has traveled to Hovd in Western Mongolia to begin final preparations. It's a two-day drive to the release site in the Komintang, a remote area of around 2,500 square kilometers that sits on the northern edge of the Gobi Desert. Her love of the flora and fauna here inspired Claudia to set up an integrated conservation project to protect this unique habitat. She is appealing to Mongolians' passion for horses, considered sacred animals, to inspire local people to embrace conservation. The horse is something real and something they like, so if you like things, you want to protect them. So it makes it easier to explain to them why you can't protect species without protecting habitats, in fact. Local knowledge of living and working with horses could also be invaluable for research. Claudia's first stop is to see a derelict building that she's going to convert into an information exchange center. The plan is for international scientists and local herders to meet here and exchange theoretical research for practical knowledge. Uh, the Wild Horse Mesh Interactive Learning Centre has been in the back of my mind for a long time. The first year, the centre of our attention will be the horse in general. So it will be theoretical aspects on the evolution of equids, on the social behaviour of wild horses, but as well more applied things like traditional acupuncture to show how it works. At the release site, Claudia has fenced an area of 13,000 hectares to protect the land from overgrazing. Since the collapse of communism here in the early 1990s, herds of sheep and goats have increased and overgrazing has caused erosion that threatens the fragile habitat. Claudia provides financial support for herders to find alternative means of income, such as salt production, allowing them to cut the size of their herds. It's up to the people to decide what they want to do and it's up to them to submit their projects because I, I think motivation is very important in life. So it's much better if they have their own ideas. 
<laughs> they get a loan between 500 and 1,000 euros. They then uh, sign an agreement that in the future they would participate in a pasture use plan on the whole of the Khomintal region. <laughs> Over the next three months, Claudia's team finalized preparations and built shelters to protect the new arrivals from the harsh Mongolian climate. By early September, everything is ready. The horses will be transported in small crates, but their distress must be kept to a minimum or it could prove disastrous. The whole journey is going to last for something like 48 hours, so this is going to be a very stressful event for, for the horses anyway, so it's very important that they don't panic completely once they're inside the crates, because uh, if they do that, it's, uh, there's a high risk of mortality. Loading the horses takes several hours. As night falls, the crates are lifted onto trucks for the first leg of their marathon journey to Mongolia. The following day, their arrival is hotly anticipated and a crowd has gathered at the final landing strip. Most have never seen a Przewalski horse and some have travelled hundreds of miles to witness their arrival on Mongolian soil. There's no shortage of volunteers to help load the crates onto trucks for the final leg of their journey, an hour-long drive to the release site. After nearly two days of travel and more than 10 years of preparation, the first horses are blessed and then released into their new home. For the people who live here, this is a symbolic day. The return of sacred wild horses to Western Mongolia. Many people who, who I know for a long time, for more than 10 years in Mongolia, they came especially to see uh, this release and uh, it wasn't so much congratulations, it was thank yous, most, most of it, because, uh, and that obviously touched me, yes. It's nice that they are here and that they survived the transport and they survived the first night. The difficult uh, period will start now, so it's not an end, it's not a finish. Uh, it's a start, really, for the project.